All right, uh, let's start. So last lecture today, we're going to be talking about hierarchical clustering. <clears throat> so um, we're back to clustering. We have a data set. We're trying to separate it into a set of uh, subpopulations, right? Uh, just partition into uh, a set into subsets. And uh, one of the problems, if you remember k-means and uh, Gaussian mixtures, one of the problems we had is picking the number of clusters, right? So for an algorithm like k-means, you need to pre-specify k, same for Gaussian mixture models, and pretty much every other clustering algorithm. You either have to specify the number of clusters, or you have to specify a parameter like a threshold or some other parameter that dictates how many clusters you end up with. So, <clears throat> um, and that was a bit irksome, right? We'd like to pick uh, the number of clusters automatically, and we talked about a few ways in which we could try to do that, uh, and we said that there is really no good way universally to pick the number of clusters. There are some algorithms that claim to do this, uh, but and, and there's some evidence that they work in some scenarios, but there is no universally good way of picking the number of clusters. And part of that is that the number of clusters is an ambiguous thing. As a human, we'd like to think that there is a natural number of clusters, but let me give an example, right? Right there, my data set. How many clusters are there? Who thinks there's two? Who thinks there's four? Okay, I, I, I kind of, well, it kind of depends, right? It depends on what you're gonna do with this. Right? This is this is actually highly ambiguous. And for the ones who think that you know there's four, what if, what if I took these and just moved them up just a, just a, just a tiny millimeter? Right? Would you think different? <clears throat> so uh, how many clusters there are in a data set is a fundamentally ill-posed question because what you're dealing with is you're uh, when you're dealing with real data you're dealing with data that has structure at multiple scales. Right? When you're asking how many clusters uh, you, you have in a data set, you're basically asking the question, what is the right scale to be looking at the data, right? If you're looking at it on a grand scale, there are two clusters here. If you're looking at, at it on a fine scale, there are four clusters. Even finer scale, there'd be 16 clusters. Maybe each one of those is actually a cloud of points, right? Maybe each one of those is a galaxy, right? And there are stars in it. And then each one of them is a cluster in and of itself. So it's a question of scale, right? Do you want to do you want to model the big uh, the, the big effects on your data, or do you want to look at, at the fine-grained things? <clears throat> so, uh, so that's why there is no good answer for picking the number of clusters. So the idea behind hierarchical clustering is instead of picking how many clusters you want, build a hierarchy. Right? So at the top, you're going to have no clusters, and then you're going to have two clusters, and then each one of those two clusters will have two subclusters, and then each one of those two subclusters will have four subclusters in turn. So that's an idea. Uh, you, build, um, you build a hierarchy of data points, and uh, the levels of the hierarchy near the top will model uh, sort of coarse-grained effects in your data, and near the bottom, you will see the fine-grained uh, effects. So again, the top cluster it would contain all the data, it would contain all the data points, and at the bottom level, you would have clusters, mini-clusters, singletons, containing one instance each. <clears throat> So that's the idea behind hierarchical clustering. Uh, there are two ways to arrive at a hierarchy of clusters. Actually, there are more, but uh, we'll talk about two. Um, so you can, you can do it to, top-down, or you can do it bottom-up. So top-down, you start by having a single cluster containing your entire data set, and you're going to start splitting it using some strategy. So you'll split it maybe into two, and then for each of the clusters that you find, you'll subsplit them and subsplit them, and so on and so forth. Uh, uh, recursively. So that's top-down. Bottom-up is the opposite. You're going to start by having as many clusters as you have data points, a singleton cluster for each individual in your population, and then you're going to start merging the nearest clusters uh, according to some strategy, and you're going to keep merging them until you merge everything into one thing. And as you do that, you will generate a structure. So uh, let's take a look briefly at both uh, strategies. So for top-down approaches, uh, there are many ways to do that. The simplest one is hierarchical k-means. Right? So we know how to split the data set into a fixed number of clusters. So if we apply this algorithm recursively, we could end up generating a structure. So the idea there is you start with a data set and data points. You run k-means with some 
fixed value of k. So let's say two, right? For simplicity, we're going to split the data set into two clumps. And then for each of the two clusters we find, we're going to run k means on it again, right? So that'll split the cluster and then again and again and again. So overall, that's what it would look like. So maybe this is my data set. I run k means with k equals to two, and maybe it'll find this as a cluster and that as a cluster. You know, not a great cluster, but hey, right? Um, and then what I do is I basically run k-means recursively, but I have to uh, put a limit on it. So everything that was put into one cluster here, the red cluster, that's one data set. Everything that was put into the yellow cluster becomes another data set. And then I run k-means at the second iteration only on the things inside each of the two uh, subsets of my data. So if I run it with k equals 2 again, uh, I'll take this data set, split it into 2, take this subset, split it into 2 as well, and then I, keep going, uh, I can keep going and going and going, right? Take this cluster, run k-means on it, get these two uh, subclusters, take this cluster, get these two, take these cluster, this cluster, uh, maybe I split it. Maybe at some point I decide that it's not worth splitting anymore, right? So here I don't seem to be splitting again. <laughs> <clears throat> so uh, it's a simple strategy. You already have the machinery for doing it, and this will produce um, a hierarchy. Now, what are the advantages? The main advantage, the main advantage is this is relatively fast. So, what is the cost of doing this? Well, <clears throat> so k is the number of clusters we have. So at each level of the hierarchy, at each level of the tree, we're going to be clustering. Uh, we're going to be creating k clusters out of n points, and each point is, has dimensionality d, right? So it's obvious at the, at the top level, we have n elements in a single population. Uh, d complexity, that's just, the, that's just the measure of complexity for comparing a centroid to each data point. It, it's going to take you d operations, because you have d attributes <coughs> in your data. And uh, k is because I need to compare each data point to each one of the k clusters. And what I'm leaving out is the number of iterations here, right? Uh, so that's constant. So that happens at the top. Now, uh, what's going to happen at the second level? At the second level, suppose that my clustering, suppose that my clusters are approximately equal in size. So uh, one cluster is going to have n over two items. The other one is going to have n over two items. Uh, so I'm going to have one run of k means over n over 2, another run of k means over n over 2, so that's k times n over 2 over d, times d, plus k times n over 2 times d. And overall, it's going to work out to be the same k times n times d. So at each level of the hierarchy, you have exactly the same number of computations. And it doesn't matter how the... <clears throat> it doesn't really matter how the instances are distributed into the clusters, whether the clusters are uniformly sized or one is bigger than another, uh, <clears throat> because what you're doing is you're putting a hard boundary. Right? Once this instance is in, the, in this subpopulation, you never compare it to any of the clusters in, from the bottom subpopulation. Right? So it's, it's a divide and conquer type thing. So the complexity is k and d at each level of the hierarchy. And how many levels uh, can I have? Well. I cannot keep splitting forever. Eventually, I'm going to end up with singleton clusters. So <clears throat> if the clusters are roughly balanced, I cannot have more than this many levels in the tree. Right? So if k is 2, this means that each time I'm splitting uh, each cluster in 2, and in log base 2 of n steps, I'm going to end up with singleton clusters. So uh, that, of course, assumes that they're uh, equally balanced, but it's, but it's a decent bound on performance, right? So, uh, and this is not much more expensive than the original k-means. Basically, I have the cost for the original k-means times log of the number of instances, which um, log is a very conservative function, so this is, really, you know, this is reasonably fast. You still have a very fast strategy. So that's the upside. The downside is that this is greedy, right? Um, remember, one of the things that we didn't like about k-means is you can have two nearby points that end up in totally different clusters, right? So, for example, here, right, this point and that point end up in different clusters, and this cannot overcome that. Once these two points are in two different clusters, I will never put them into one cluster again, right? So, I, I, I will never consider this as a single cluster, 
Once they're separate, you cannot put them back together. So that's 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 the downside. <clears throat> and of course, just like the original k-means, depending on where you start, you will end up with a different uh, clustering. And this time, you'll end up with a different hierarchy of clusters. So your your initial position for the seeds for the centroids of clusters will have a big effect on what you end up with at the end of the day. 